Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And uh, I have a good one for you today because no one is buying right now. Please like, subscribe, comment in the video. Let me know what you think about all this stuff. Plus, we have a sponsor today, DeFi Technologies, and I will talk about them a little later. Now, the real estate market. One thing that is absolutely fascinating is that you have older people that have been basically sitting on the sidelines over the course of the last couple years right now. You know, should we sell? Should we not? You know, let's, let's dive into it. Now these people are starting to list their houses and they are not selling. And why is that, guys? Why is it that these houses are not selling? All we're hearing about is lack of inventory, which I am telling you guys, if you go look in my area, you know, you don't have $431,000 houses here in Southern California anywhere 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 there is no four hundred thirty one thousand dollar house and uh you know with that being said these people that are sitting there are realizing that the time has come and gone you know to sell your house now think about this this is what's wild in two years time two years time they rose the interest rates to five and a half percent in two years time and with that it made it so that you know, mortgage rates, if you have stellar credit, if you've got a great job, if you've got a substantial down payment, right now it's 7.3% as of the filming of this video. It's a lot, guys. And, and again, it's, you know, people can sit there and say, oh, it's nothing compared to when I paid 13%. My first mortgage was 10% for something that cost $86,000. There are cars that cost more than $86,000. And with that being said, you've got more people out there that cannot afford these payments at these prices. It's absolutely through the roof right now. But what it's done is it made people realize that they may be stuck where they're at. The other thing is this National Association of Realtor lawsuit that, you know, it's been settled, it's no big deal. I want you to think about this. How about this? You walk into a house, an open house, and you have to sign a form where they say, listen, if you ever buy this house, we get the commission from it. Who would ever do that? Who would ever do that? You, most people go out and they research, do their own research and go, gosh, that house on Elm Street's available. Let's drive over there and take a look at it. You know, it's funny, I met that couple from Scottsdale yesterday and that is a really high end area, but they, hey, I wanted to come to Southern California because, you know, it's over a hundred right now in Scottsdale but they live in a really high end area. There's no two ways about it, but you don't see $400,000 houses in Scottsdale either. They just don't exist. So Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, he steps forward and says, you have a real problem with real estate. And the real problem is these interest rates. Everybody is waiting for this magic day where there's going to be this huge you know, downturn of real estate uh, interest rates. that's going to make mortgages drop to the floor. And it's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen anytime soon. And you need to look at this, you know, think of alternatives. Think about renting out your house. Think about getting a, you know, a management company to do this for you so you don't have some a squatting idiot in your house if you have to move on. You know, think about this. You know, one thing that was offered to me recently was what if, Dan, what if you bought our house and we carried the note? because they, they owed next to nothing on the house. You could basically pay the, the note off and we'll carry the finance and you buy our house. Well, that's intriguing, you know, tell me more about that. You're gonna see things like this happen more and more. The house would be in my name, but the note would be in these people's name where every month they'd make a, uh, you know, they'd, they'd make the mortgage payment, you know, as their retirement, towards their retirement. So one thing that we're seeing right now is that they're just not moving. Now, throughout the country, we are seeing hot areas. There are areas where things are going over asking price and you're seeing things like that, that's happening. But one thing you have to look at is I'm telling you this right now, you have to look at the insurance situation. If you have a homeowners association, you need to look at what the price of the homeowners association is. You need to look at the financials of the homeowners association. Wow, can I ask for that? Yeah, you can ask for anything when you buy the house because you wanna make sure that the homeowner association isn't being fleeced 
or hey yeah we hired some contractor and it's my brother who's gonna paint this building for three hundred thousand dollars you know what I mean this is happening around the country but the insurance is the big problem people's association fees going through the roof going through the roof I don't know if I would ever buy a house with a homeowner association again ever now there's some things with security and there's some things with a gate out front with a guy standing there and things like that that you cannot argue are, are of serious value to people and I agree with that but what's the answer to all this right now what is the answer is it you know is it waiting right now is it you know do you think interest rates are gonna drop down enough to where they're gonna go down they're gonna be uh, it's gonna be reasonable for your budget what if you could save fifty thousand dollars on that house okay is that is that worth it to you well Dan what if it goes up fifty thousand dollars okay what about Meyer I've already seen price drops seventy five thousand one hundred and twenty five thousand dollar price drop which tells me that the house is overpriced in the first place that's just me but let me know what you think about this because I agree with the experts that are realistic you know car salesmen want to sell cars that's fine they can sell cars I'm not you know belittling anybody that wants to move product real estate agents want to sell houses but when you hear about Loan Depot who's got 478 million dollars in financing that they're putting up they're kicking the can down the road for interest payments until 2025 it's the end of days guys it is the end of it the um, insurance man yesterday talked about his family members that run the mortgage industry that are dead in different areas of the country it has no bearing on the fact that um, they're in this oh this area is bad Dan you, you know Florida you think Florida's got a problem you think the East Coast has got a problem no guys these are high-end areas that are not writing loans right now because people cannot afford the high interest rate the lie about inflation which I think it's much much higher I think we should be lucky that interest rates are where they're at right now that's my opinion because I don't believe for a second for a second that uh, we are seeing you know the end of this I think it's going to only go up from here so let me know let me know and what do you think about these real estate agents that want you to sign forms you know we'll, we'll deal with this commission thing up front where the seller is gonna pay this you know it, think about this transparency the lawsuit that they lost was about steering where when somebody looks at a listing and they draw you know we just want to get into the neighborhood oh well let me take you to this house it's got a 3% commission over this house it's got a 1% commission I've already got my loan approved I could go buy my house and I will not use a buyer's agent will not do it will not do it I'll probably end up buying something from the bank is what probably what's gonna happen but uh, but with that being said what are you saying let's talk about our sponsor DeFi technologies the ticker symbol is DEFTF and you guys have asked for something different and this is it um, it's not a speculative company this is a company that is established this is a company that is absolutely amazing and poised for massive growth now what they do is they sell digital assets through uh, exchange traded products ETPs and what this allows you to do is invest in different uh, cryptocurrencies and different uh, ventures that they have a piece of and it's all through your brokerage account you buy the stock and they are making money literally hand over fist right now with what they're doing but it is poised for massive growth now to talk about this what is an exchange traded product it's like an exchange traded fund but in different areas of the world they call it ETPs now what they've done is they've invested in different cryptocurrencies projects and they make management fees and these management fees are incredibly lucrative they have almost a billion dollars under management and with that they make basically a 7% commission on that so think of the money that they make on that alone now the company also has different ventures that they've invested into and with that the company has just taken off in the last week the stock went up almost a dollar and the filming of this video was just over two dollars and twenty cents a share it's been absolute craziness as far as the growth of this company now their management team is second to none they have 
investors that are absolutely huge in the space. Anthony Pompliano, Pomp, is a huge crypto investor who's involved with the company. But let me tell you a little bit more about what they do. Now they have two wholly owned subsidiaries that are absolutely stellar. Reflexivity is a company that does research reports on the crypto space and they own that. They also own a company, Valor, which is the company that sells the ETFs and ETPs. And you know, the thing about this is not just Bitcoin, Bitcoin's only 51% of what they sell. Ethereum, Solana, it's several different types of cryptocurrencies that are in these ETPs that they are working with. It's absolutely uh, exciting because they make so much money for this. Now think about this, if you owned a toll road, you're making money in both directions when people drive on it. And that's what's happening with DeFi. They get you coming and going, guys. and, and whether you buy or sell, they make money on this. And when you look at their financials, they have a tremendous amount of cash on hand. They have a market cap that is expected to be worth uh, uh, $1.1 billion this year. It's absolutely crazy what they're doing and where this company is headed right now. Now, when I invest in a company, one thing that I always find myself doing is looking at the management team. What's their experience? Can they take us, you know, on the long haul? Can we, you know, run the marathon with this company? And when you hear this group, let me just give you a few of the executives. It's absolutely a stellar group. You've got Oliver Newton, who uh, was the founder of Hive Blockchain. You've got Ryan uh, uh, Ptolemy, who uh, was the Aberdeen uh, International former CFO, and he's been the CFO of multiple companies. Russell Starr, CEO of... Uh, uh, Trillium Gold, and then uh, their secretary is uh, Kenny Choi. So once again, you've got a company with leadership that is second to none. And when you look at this stock, look at what the activity is. Look at what the growth has been over the course of the last week. DEFTF, take a look at this today because something is going on with this. When you look at alternatives to our investments and you Cryptocurrency is going to be here, guys. It's here to stay no matter what happens. And we need to protect ourselves and have different investments, but we need to have things that could po get poised for massive growth. There has been analyst ratings that have given this company a $3 rating. There have been analyst ratings that have been, you know, I've seen 225. Companies already surpassed that. The other one is the CEO talked in a private call, hey, if we ever did a buyout, it would be $8 a share is what he mentioned, which would be four times your money right now at $8. Now, they're gonna make money hand over fist in the future. That's what you need to look at with a company like this because get yourself into something different. Look at the blockchain technology, look at cryptos, look at these ETPs, and look at a company that is making money at this hand over fist. I'm gonna leave the company report below. Take a look at that, guys, because this will convince you of how stellar this company is. Now, DeFi Technologies is a publicly traded company, which means that they have to follow certain guidelines with reporting uh, to their shareholders and to the public. They are a staking company that also lends people money. They also have management fees, but they make a tremendous amount of money. And one thing that, you know, when I talk about certain companies is that, wow, has there been any news in the company? I want you to think about this. You know, look at the news for DeFi technology for just June. We're only halfway through the month and there's been five press releases issued by this company. This company is going places. This company is doing things that you've never seen other public companies do. This is the infancy for this company. So they want to get themselves on uh, NASDAQ or uh, uh, the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And it's just a matter of time until they do that. But this is something you should take a look at. Look at DEFTF. Take a look at it today. One thing that I read every week in our local newspaper, the Orange County Register, is the restaurants that were closed down for health violations. Now, as a guy who goes out and travels all over the county all the time, 
I constantly look at this and I always go, dang it, I ate there. And it's funny, now I'm getting better that I went to a hibachi place with my buddy Doug about six months ago and we pulled up to the place and it was closed on a Tuesday night. And I'm like, oh, Doug, this is a bad sign. I, I just, why? They're just closed. Maybe they're understaffed. Who knows? No, 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 no. Sure enough, on Sunday of that week, this company was written up uh, for, um, you know, not having enough hot water, rodent droppings, fun stuff like that. So, again, I'll never eat there again. Have a nice day. But the people in Florida, oh, my gosh. They go crazy with this. And I love this. Somebody turned me on to this about two years ago and it's called Dirty Dining. They don't mess around in Florida. They slam these restaurants like you wouldn't believe. And the latest one that was sent to me was Canton Chinese. And, you know, again, they write about this place. They're talking about rodent droppings, uh, cockroach infestations. And, you know, when people went there to eat at the place, it wasn't a voluntary closure. It was mandatory. And the mandatory closure was uh, because of the 26 violations that they had. Hello. Hello. You know, one thing that my sister, that my brother's wife owns a restaurant. And the one thing she said, she says, I don't care how old the place is. I don't care what, what city it's in. I don't care anything. It can look dingy. It can look everything. If you're not sure, walk in their bathroom. Go use the bathroom first before you order anything. If the bathroom is dirty, the place is dirty. If the bathroom is clean, the place is clean. And this has been a good guide for me. But man, oh man, dirty dining. Do you guys read this stuff? Because I do. I, I get a kick out of that. So let me know, guys. Let me know what you think about that. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And... Uh, don't forget to join our email list, which is below. And if you want to email me, it's hello at iallegedly.com. I'll see you guys very soon.